Hello everybody, welcome to Grace Bear Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer was sent to me by Andy. This is Upland Brewing's Dragonfly IPA, India Pale Ale. The, this beer comes in at 6, it says 6.8 here. Let's see what's on the label. It's got 6.7 on the label here. 65 IBUs. And uh, it's got it notched here. Uh, best enjoyed by March of 2015. Notch right on the side of the label here. Very nice job. There's no digitized code on the label. Uh, thumbs up to those guys for doing that. So you've got the date, you've got the alcohol, and you've got the IBUs right on the label. That's the way to do it. That's exactly, definitely the way to do it. And a really colorful cap here with Upland. Got some mountains there and a uh, blue sky in the background. Very colorful uh, cap on this and very nice and uh, usually try to save those uh, I don't think I've got one of those there but as you notice I don't have an opener down on the table I have sold every one that I have even the one that I was using so uh, got the next batch ordered hopefully it'll be in by uh, in a day or two uh, by the time you see this hopefully they will be in and I'm gonna post a video because I'm about a week ahead uh, but anyway, let's get back to this beer, the Dragonfly IPA by Upland. Commercial description on this one says, The Upland Dragonfly IPA is a malty and hoppy brew. Note the clean malty fullness on the front of the palate with the fruity citrus overtones. Attributable to our special hops. The dry hopping creates a floral aroma and our use of bittering hops lends a strong bitter taste in the back of the tongue and throat. Uh... Food pairings for this beer, it says, it's an IPA, so it's going to be your typical IPA, the cuisine is curried in a tie. These are just their suggestions, guys. I mean, uh, th 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 these kind of beers, uh, if you're a hot head, go with just about anything. Uh, food pairings, uh, curry and tie, cheese with a peppery, pepper jack, Monterey, sharp blue cheddar, and your pungent, more pungent cheeses. And the meat for this is poultry, fish, shellfish, and salmon. And I will add grilled meat to that because I like just about everything off the grill. It's a nice IPA. And uh, I think that's all we're going to talk about. Like Since I don't have an opener, I brought the, the old opener from the drawer in here. And I'm going to try to save this cap. So, And this one, this opener is known for bending it up or the, my review of beer review openers do not. So I'm going to be very gentle here. See if I can get it off without bending it up. All right, not too bad. I believe that's, I believe that's doable on the fridge downstairs. So let's get this a pour into the glass. Andy, thanks again for sending those beers down to me. I'm trying to get to these beers, especially these IPAs, as quick as I can. But with the amount of beer that's been sent to me recently, good problem to have for me. Uh, some of them sit in there for a week or two or three before I get to them. Uh, but that pour, we barely got a head on it. Uh, it's just barely covering the top of the glass. Over to the light, we've got uh, a nice orange tangerine color on this one. And it is pretty clear. I can see the bulb right through it. A lot of bubbles streaming up. And as you've noticed, I've got my black version of Greg's Beer Review t-shirts. Didn't order very many of these. And I've already... Uh, sent out several of them so if you're interested in the black uh, Greg's Beer Review t-shirts shoot me an email and uh, let me know what size you're after I, I bought four larges four extra larges and four 2x's and three of the 2x's are gone already including the one that I'm wearing now so uh, there are some larges and extra larges left uh, 
and there may be one more 2x left in there uh, I think I showed you on the uh, reviews it's basically the same as the white one except they reverse the colors it's got the the, the mugs on the front with Greg's beer reviews and it's got the fridge on the back let's go see what's in the fridge guys so basically that's what the black one looks like basically the same logo I just reverse the colors for the black one all right let's get a nose on this puppy and it does have a nice citrusy aroma there it's not an up in your face kind of grapefruit pineapple west coast style there is a nice maltiness to it this is probably one that's not going to blow my hair back or my socks off. This may be uh, a nice transitional beer uh, if you're wanting to get into the IPAs or, or a little more subdued IPA, if you will. Just a hint of some fruitiness in there, maybe some oranges and tangerines. But there is a nice maltiness going on with that. The hops are not overpowering. Not like an enjoy buy or anything like that by, by any means. So. Well, let's give it a taste and see what we got. Looks good. Let's see if it tastes good. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Andy. Yes, very subdued IPA. It's not got that West Coast in-your-face kind of hops going on here, guys. These guys are out of Bloomington... Indiana. A nice drinkable, very easy to drink kind of IPA. I mean, uh, there are some pale ales that have more hot presence than this. Sierra Nevadas and several others. Dale's Pale Ale. Are much more hoppier than this than this is to me. So, but like I said, it could be a good transitional beer for somebody that wants to move from either the macro lagers into an IPA, uh, an easy easier drinking IPA than than uh, who, uh, what a, a lot of them are, or somebody wants to move uh, from maybe a pale ale or, or, or another type of beer into an IPA. This this one is not. Going to, uh, you know, it does have some bitterness with the, the IBUs at, uh, what did I say, 65? There is, there is, there is some bitterness on the back end, but it's not overpowering or overwhelming. It's got a nice, it's got a nice balance to it. It's not overwhelming in the hops, like I said, guys. So, let's let this one, uh, warm up just a hair and let her taste it in the process and I'll come back and do the final chug on this one. Uh, don't think it's going to be in the A category, but we'll see. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Uh, not a bad beer uh, at all. Nice citrusy, a uh, little bit of floral and hops going on in there. Uh, like I said earlier, it's uh, not that West Coast style in your face, pineapple, grapefruit, pine and all that. It's, it's a little more subdued. Uh, uh, it's got a nice malt uh, characteristics to it. Uh, it's a fairly easy drinking uh, entry level IPA, if you will. Uh, might uh, might be a nice one to, to ease into the IPA category. So, with that being said, let's do the final chug on this one. Very easy drinking. Very easy drinking. Not a bad beer, but. I don't think it's quite to the A category. If you're a hop head, especially like I am, it's not going to blow your hair back or your socks off. Uh, guys, as far as I'm concerned, for a grade, for all the information these guys have got on the bottle, which is what we need, the date, the ABV, and the IBUs, it's, 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 they've got the information there. The beer is just a little more subdued. Uh, I would consider it an entry-level IPA. So with that being said, guys, uh, I'm going to give this... I'm going to give this C6, which is a B. Uh, if you've not had an IPA before, you might think this is, oh man, this is the hoppiest thing I've ever had. But if you're a seasoned hop head or a hop beer drinker, IPA drinker, uh, you would think, oh, this ain't worth a crap. And I judge the beer accordingly. I mean, if you're looking for a Stone Enjoy Buy or, or something that's got that massive West Coast hop profile, this is not it. This is definitely not it. But, uh, uh, I applaud those guys for putting all the information we need on the label. That's 
that's a good thing. That is definitely a good thing. If it didn't have all that information on there, it would probably get a lower grade. But since it does, I'm going to give it to solid B. Like I said, it's a it's a six in my book. So we'll go over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 78 in the okay range. It is an okay beer. Uh, if I was putting a numeric grade on this, I'd probably give it an 80. That's where I would put it at. So uh, over to Rake Beer. Rake Beer says... Overall, well, if I can get the tablet to work, looks like it's froze up. That talks. You gotta love it. Not like a like a printed page like I used to do several years ago. So, and it's not coming up. <laughs> Thought I was going to give you that rating, guys, but it looks like it's not working right now. So let me take a quick break and see if I can get it up. All right, finally, got it up and working. They have overall 72 and 45 in the style. Not very impressive numbers from those guys there. So, like I said, uh, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt since the information's on there. It's not a bad beer. It's not a bad tasting beer at all. Uh, nice citrusiness to it, nice maltiness to the back end of it. Not too awful bitter, but it's 65 IBUs. It's... It's up there a little bit, so if you're not used to drinking an IPA, like I said, if you want an entry-level IPA, this may be the, the ticket here. So, with that with being said, uh, guys, uh, uh, I think it's a decent beer, but nothing to write home about. So, especially if you're a hophead like I am. So, we'll leave it at that. If you've had the Dragonfly IPA from Upland Brewing, let me know what you think. And let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.